Shalom, Habarim, Shalom. So, why didn't Haile Selassie have dreadlocks? This is the question that people still ask this very day. I recall being asked this question a couple of decades ago. You know, one say, well, you have dreadlocks. Uh, why, why doesn't Haile Selassie have dreadlocks? Like, as though, well, if I have dreadlocks, you know, or locks, as we would say, but the world calls it dreadlocks, then Haile Selassie has to have dreadlocks. Why does Haile Selassie have to have dreadlocks if we, right, his people, right, self-identified as Ras Teferi or Rastafari, right, Sedona mostly called Rastas by the world, but more fully as Rastafari. If we as the people Rastafari of the Rastafari, Kedamami Haile Selassie, right? If we have dreadlocks, why does Haile Selassie have to have dreadlocks? So we're going to just begin off with this one right here. Yes, I know some will say, okay, this picture is fake. This is fake. Yeah, this is art. It's what you call art, right? This is an artistic expression. I right, had a really good reason, man. Heal up to my brethren, duly elected chaplain, Ethiopian World Federation, Incorporated, Ross Seymour Liberd. Yes, I. We had, you know, we just vibes in a little early and kind of reasoning on this particular subject matter. It's one of those things that it actually still comes up to this very day that ones will say, well, if Rastas, the Rastafari, have dreadlocks, why does not Haile Selassie have dreadlocks? So let's let's be polite, right? We sum this up right here as a, a point of cognition. You know what cognition is? Cognition from gnosis at the root, right? Diagnosis, gnosis, cognition, gnosis, the cognizant, to know. Like, how do we know something? Some call it cognitive dissonance. It's a cognitive dissonance in this particular question. Because the first thing is, well, what is the reasons for the Rastafari having dreadlocks? What, what is the reason that the Rastafari, I could say I and I, but here just to kind of um, like in a kind of a third person sense, what is the reason for the Rastafari having dreadlocks what's the reasons that they give you could probably google it or search it out most of the reasons has to do with um some firstly foremostly is the biblical reason as his master says for my part i glory in the bible and those rastafari that glory in the rastafari Selassie, also seek to find that glory in the bible and that overstanding of the bible so we have numbers chapter six so we're going to go to Numbers chapter 6, but on this question of why does not, why didn't, one might say, Haile Selassie I, the Rastafari, he is the Rastafari, right, of all those self-named and even abbreviated to Rastas. The Rasta is an unfortunate abbreviation, and from that abbreviation comes, doctrinally speaking, according to the teaching, many uh, deviations from that abbreviation of Rasta. We're going to touch on that a little bit more, but just put that on a beam right here, here, here. So what's the reasons for the Rastafari having what is called and referred to as dreadlocks? So here we go right here. We get to the vow of the Nazarite. What's called the vow of the Nazarite, right? The vow of the Nazarite. Right now, the vow of the Nazarite is said to have nothing to do with the town of Nazareth. Let's bring that up. Okay, that's much clearer right there. Here, so this is some of our research here. I'm going to go into this right here, here, here. Right, nothing to do with the town of Nazareth. Now, that is that's actually correct Hebraically from a Hebrew perspective. This is how translation sometimes can confuse us. And in the New Testament, the apostle, the great apostle, our Brother Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the great apostle of the Gentiles, Brother Paulos, Paul, what Paul says, right? What, what does Paul say? I know some of you don't like Paul, but his majesty loved Paul, and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and we do, you know, we do as, as well. Some things that are hard to be understood. I think it was actually Peter that talked about it. 
right? But he says, he says, study to shoe yourself approved. I think to Timothy, he says, study to shoe yourself approved. That's the New Testament, right? So from an English reading of the Bible, it would seem, it seem, right? So what seems to be and what be tends to be two different realities, what seems to be. So when you're just reading in the Bible, King James Version of the Bible, Nazarite, and then you go to the New Testament, come across Nazareth, right? And even when you see Nazarene, there's, there's this immediate association between this and that. Now, even in the New Testament, it says that Paul and some of the other brethren, they had a vow upon them and they shaved their heads. It almost points out that whatever vow they had, right, was the vow or related to this vow that we call the Nazarite vow. Now, actually, it's supposed to be Nazirite, more correctly spelled N-A-Z-I-R. When we look at Nazareth, it's not a Zion. Zion is a Z in Hebrew. In Nazareth, we have the Tzadai, Tzadai, the Tzadai, right? That sound that in transliteration is like a TZ sound or a TS sound. It's like a uh, emphatic kind of a, an emphatic kind of a Z sound or Tzadai. We'll touch on that right there on how Nazarite and Nazareth in the transliteration in the English Bibles, like King James Version, they look similar, right? They, they look like they're the same. So from an English perspective, a, a translation, get lost in translation, the, here's where you can get lost in translation. You look at the English and say, Nazarite, looks just like Nazareth. Both of them has Nazar. But as you go into your study, you'll find these are two different words. So when it says here, nothing to do with the town of Nazareth. We would say that Nazarite and Nazareth are from two different Hebrew roots. But we cannot say that in the town of Nazareth, there was nobody with a vow of a Nazarite. Can they say that? You cannot say that. But to say that Nazareth and Nazarite is the same because of how it looks in the transliterations, that would be a kind of a, a, a false premise right there. That's, that's wrong. They, they are totally different Hebrew words. Is there a relation? We say, yes, there's a relation, but we'll touch on that after we touch on this right here. What were the reasons? The reasons, right? The reasons. And here, when we get to Numbers chapter, Numbers chapter six, right? Numbers chapter six, where it says, speak to the children of Israel. The Bnei Yisrael, the Israelites, and say to them, if a man or a woman, right now here they have wants to make a special vow, a vow of dedication to the Lord as a Nazarite. Now this is another translation right here, here, here. Here's what we like to do right here just to get the best um, translation. Okay, here you can tell we're, we're doing some, some look up right here in the Hebrew. So we got, have to bring this back over here to kind of regular like to you know to to regular let's take this out right here and let's go to the english right here and let's go nazar let's go nazar right there boom so here we go in numbers chapter 6 verse 2 the safer by mead bar it says speak to the bene israel and say to them when either i the man or woman when either a ish right or a isha Isha, 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 the word for a man or a woman. Now, in many other places, when it says man, it actually says Adam. So not every place that says man does it say Ish. In some places it says Adam. But here, the higher form, the higher form, the more refined form, the basic form of all man is the Adam, the Adam type, general humanity. But when either a higher man or a higher woman, a man or a woman, right, a ish or a isha, shall separate themselves to vow. So the word here is separate. Here we have the word pala, pala, right, pala or phala, and another pointing, pala, right, pala, right. Here's a very interesting word right here, Hebraically speaking. Right. But one of its meanings here in translation is to separate in a sense to distinguish, right, to distinguish oneself. So we said to separate. Right. So what kind of vow here? It is a 
to separate themselves to vow. So when either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow. Notice, let's read the language. Let's understand the language here. We could go through the Hebrew, which will be important, bringing out the basics of what is right and accurate here in the King James Version and also what is not so accurate. Because much of it is accurate, but we have to have attention to details. Shall separate themselves. So what will a man or woman do? They will separate themselves why, to vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves, la Yahuwah, to Jehovah. Note this very interesting right here. People say it's a vow of a separation. Yes, but notice what it says first. Notice this right here. Notice the first word separate is not the same according to the, the blue, the, the, the strongs, the blue letter, you know, the blue numbers, the H6381, first separate is pala, pala, fala, pala. The second separate, the age 5144, is Nazar. You just check that right there. Now, reading from the English, we think that both words separate. It's just that the translator, I guess for simplicity of translation or maybe a lack of full comprehension of these ancient Hebrew writings and documents, they chose basically to say separate in both instances. But what you can clearly see is not separate in both instances. Right here, the second one to separate themselves to Nazir, to Nazar, to Nazar, right? To Nazar, this is the verb to hold aloof, to abstain, to hold aloof, to abstain, to set apart, to devote in the sense of to consecrate or to separate. The first one says, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow, shall separate, shall pala. Be wonderful, marvelous, separate by distinguishing action. Here's the key right here. Separate themselves by distinguishing action. What's the action here with the Nazir? The action here is growing the here with the Nazir, right? But now this is an interesting word. Pala also means to be beyond one's power, to be difficult to do. This often is used like in something of wonderful, amazing, pele. We say that Yahuwah, he who be, who he be, Ose, Ose, he is the doer, he is the maker, Fele, Pele, Pele, the same root there. He He's a doer of wonderful things, of things that are too difficult to even sometimes understand, right? They're wonderful, extraordinary, marvelous. Now, in the PL sense of the verb, right, it can be to separate like an offering. Right? To do something that's extraordinary, a wonderful thing. To show oneself, the Hitpa'el sense, you can see, is to show oneself wonderful or marvelous. Right? Now, now that's, I pointed to that because one has to understand that the, the word translated as separate is not the same word separate. So they shall do, if a man or woman shall separate themselves to vow. If she, they shall do something that is wonderful, separate by distinguishing action, right? Something that's hidden, that's hard. You can see all of this is a part of bringing out the essence of this particular word. So there's two forms of separations here, right? This is at the root of why many and most, I would say, of the called, chosen, and faithful Rastafari would point to for the reasoning or a point of scriptural reference to the growing of the locks that is called dread locks to separate themselves la yahuwah separate themselves to jehovah what shall they do let's go to the next verse right here it says he or she right shall separate themselves shall separate himself from wine and strong drink and drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes nor eat moist grapes or dried all the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree from the kernels even to the husk now note here it's not speaking of all mm -hmm. it's not speaking of all my things that grow of the vine. Many rosters and others reading the King James Version thought that some of the elders used to not, not eat anything of the vine. 
because in their understanding of it, they saw the vine. But specifically here, right, from HaTorah is speaking of the grape and related to the grape vine in particular to what we have in HaTorah right here. Shall separate, Nazarite ship. So that separation, his separation is his Nezer. Notice now we have another word, Nezer, from that root Nazar, right, Nazar. Now notice what Nazar is here. The BDB Browns Drivers Briggs definition says consecration crown, separation, Nazarite ship. Let's reread this verse right here. All the days of his crown, his separation, his Nazarite ship, shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree. Speaking about the, the grape, grape vine, grape, the deal with the grapes and the vine, right? From the kernels even to the husk. Right now, here's the big verse right here, verse five. All the days of the vow, so it's a what? It's a neder, neder, neder in Hebrew is a vow, a votive offering. What does votive mean? Votive is will, right? One set their will, and through the proclamation of their word, sound, I will do this or I will do not do that. That's a vow, right? That's the sense of the neder. Some interpret this within the context of the promise to him to the Elohim, right? To Yahweh Eloheinu, HaKadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem. Also something that's promised. But the basic root is a vow, is a votive. When you look up votive, votive has to do with the Nadar to make a vow to express one's will, right? Positively to do or to give something. In a positive sense, to do or to give something to Hashem, to the Almighty, to the name, to Yahweh Eloheinu. To Jah, to Yah, right? This is what it's bringing out right here. Directly what it's bringing out right here. All the days of the vow. So the vow is that word where one expresses their will of his separation, of his nezer, his nezer, right? His consecration, his crown, right? Crown. Notice what it says, even says right here, airing can also be a nezer. Stones of a crown are a nezer. A woman's here. Notice what it says, a woman's here is a nezer, consecration. Notice this, the consecration of a high priest, Kohen Gadol, is a nezer, right? A crown. Notice the connection with crown, and specifically here of the Nazarite is a crown, right? Once again, look at what the definition strong says. Properly, something set apart, that is, abstractly, a dedication, like the dedication of a priest or a Nazarite. So here we have in HaTorah where those who are not sons of Aaron, right, of Aaron, because only the sons of Aaron among the Levites could be priests and could be anointed and in that sense receive this kind of dedication and the, and the Nazarites, the Nazarite here becomes something for the rank and file Israelites, for the rank and file Israelites. So now the rank and file Israelites doing this act here based on their vow and separating themselves to vow. Notice the language, separating, doing something wonderful, difficult by an outward sign, right? To vow, to give their word, their yea and their amen, right? To separate themselves, right? To nazar themselves, la Yahuwah. To he who be, who he be, to Jehovah. All right? This is, to, this is still to answer the question when people say, well, why didn't Hala Selassie have locks? Because why does the Rastafari have locks? If it's based on this right here, who do we see and who do the Rastafari see as Yahuwah? He who be, who he be. Who do they seek the Maui Hala Selassie? Hala Selassie, and this is speak just generally, right? not for every man specifically, but for the Rastafari, right, as this particular, this peculiar people, right? We see his majesty as, as the God, as the God-man, or he stands for that sign. He stands for Yahweh. He is the one. We say Yah, Jah, Rastafari, right? That he who be the Rastafari. So he is that one in that place of the God, and the king of Yisrael. So we separate ourselves to him and to his way to devote ourselves to his purpose and his cause, which is the kingdom of the Lord. 
right? The kingdom of the Lord. Even Yeshua said that if one receives like a prophet in a, in a prophet's name, they get a prophet's reward. If they receive a, 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 like a good man in a good man's name, a prophet or a righteous one in the name of a righteous one. So we receive Yahuwah the Almighty. In and through the name of Kedemawi Hala Selassie, that man who is the sign and the seer, weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Psalm 87 verse 4, right? I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia, this man was born there and other places as well. So this is from the Rastafari perspective. This is not saying that others who are not Rastafari or who are even anti-Rastafari would agree with the Rastafari vow, word, you know, and what we say, right? So this is to say that others, you might not agree with this, but first of all, if you're going to ask, well, why didn't Haile Selassie have locks, right? Or dreadlocks. He did have locks, but why did he have dreadlocks as we come to know them? Well, we have to say that, why did he have to have dreadlocks? When we begin to understand the reasons why, right, the called, chosen, and faithful Rastafari from such a time, from such an Iowa to such a time, had locks according to the teaching and according to the way, this is the way, was because of Numbers chapter, the references to Numbers chapter 6, right, that vow. That vow to separate, right, Right? To, 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 to separate themselves, to vow a vow, right, of the Nazarite, right? And what does the Nazarite mean? The Nazarite has to do with the crown, right? The Nazarite also has to do, as it says right here, it says the dedication of a priest or Nazarite. That brought anyone who took this vow on a level of set apartness and separateness. That's what it means to be holy. To be holy. He's all holy, holy, holy. But what holy means as a real action in reality is to be set apart for. Set apart for the service of. Set apart for. So the priests are set apart for the service. They are holy, la Yahuwah, to Jehovah. And now any man or woman of the children, the rank and file Israelites, the other 12 tribes would separate themselves. They then come up to this very same level of consecration and separation for service. It's all about for service. Hence, what does it say? Hence, concretely, remember we showed you that when it's about the Nazar and the Nazir, you know, what it speaks about is the, no, the Pele, it was a Pala, Pala. In the pala fala sense, it was to do something wonderful, right? Remember, do something wonderful by an outward, what is it? By an outward sign, an outward sign, right? An outward sign, right? Let's just bring that up right here so you can see exactly what we said right here. Here we was on pala, pala. Remember right here, pala, that's the pala, right? Pala and this pointing or fala. My pala fala, according to the ancient Hebrew dialects, the H6381, to be marvelous, to be wonderful, be surpassing, be extraordinary. Isn't it extraordinary when you see a black man or a black woman that, that grow their locks, especially in the Rastafari way? Yes. To separate by distinguishing action. You see right there? To separate by distinguishing action. So this action of any rank and file Israelite, right, would bring them up, you know, would bring them up. And they, and they also talk about the difficulty, right? right? That's why many are called, <laughs> as it says, right? Many are called. Which word were we on right here? Mm, we was on, we was on this word right here, Nezer. We was on Nezer. Right, yeah, we was down here. So notice what it says, Nezer. Concretely, it says, hence concretely, notice what it says right here. Unshorn locks. Right, bring that out right there. Unshorn locks, just so you can see it clear. Unshorn locks. Remember that Nezer, the Nazer, Nazer means a crown. We showed you that. It's from the root word Nazar. Right, Nazar. Right? Remember what Nazar, that, that, that separation. So the key idea in the word 
right? The word Nazar at the root has to do with separation. And from that root, we have Nezer, Nezer, which is a crown, right? And the connection with the priest, right? Because of that separation, that consecration to the Holy One, right? To Yahweh, right? To Yah, to Jah, Rastafari. So right there, that shows that question here. Since they are separating themselves to Yahuwah, right? According to what we read right here, right? According to what we read right here, it says, All the days of the vow of his separation, right? Shall no razor come upon his head, his rosh, his ras, rosh, rosh is the Hebrew of saying ras, reis, right? Until the days be fulfilled in the which he separated himself, he nazar, right? Nazar, to dedicate, consecrate. But when we get to the root Hebrew sense, like the nephile, is to dedicate oneself, to devote, to devote oneself. I, I and I, thus the I and the I, one I, all as I, right? He feel, the he feel sense is to keep sacredly separate, right? To be a Nazarite, to live as one set apart, right? One set apart. This is the root idea. Right of why this word was used, the Nazarite. So a Nazarite, in principle, right, in principle, is one who devotes themselves. For the Hebrews and for the Israelites, when a man or woman who is not a Levite, right, or not not a priest or a Levite does this, right, this brings them into can a Levite or any of Israel can do this. But we already know that the priest. Right, are the descendants of Aaron. All of the priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. So other Levites could, as we have Shemuel, Samuel. Samuel in the scripture had the vow, had, had locks. We have a few ones who are in the scriptures who one had a Nazarite in the sense of they also had locks. But the principle is to separate. According to what's written here is, shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled in the which he separate himself to who? To who is he se who is he nazaring himself? He's nazaring himself to Yahuwah, to Yahuwah, to the existing one, to he who be who he be, to Hakadosh, Baruch Baruch Hashem. To, for what purpose? To be holy. To be what? To be Kadosh. Kadosh. As he who be who he be is Kadosh. Right? Baruch Hakadosh. The Holy One, Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, blessed be the name, right? To be separate, right? To be set apart, Kadash. What does Kadash mean? Kadash means to be consecrated, to be separated, sanctified, set apart. So there's a setting apart, the idea of a setting apart. See the Nephile sense? To show oneself sacred or majestic. So he is his majesty. He is that man who is the sign and the seal, right, of the prophecy, right, of he who be who he be of the Almighty, right, that God, that God-man. Now, some brothers might see him as a God-man. Other ones might see him more as the manifestation of the God. The point is that we are separating ourselves to him. So my question here is, did Yahweh, did Jehovah, did the Lord, have locks? I'm talking about the Lord, the, the Almighty. Did, did he have locks? People say, oh, well, he is spirit. Well, yes, it, it is written, and so it be. But it also says that uh, smoke, right, in his nostrils, right, his mouth, his hand, his arm. Doesn't it speak about that as well? It speaks about he is head, right, over all. So did the Lord have locks? Mm -hmm. In other words, did Jah... Does Jehovah have locks? To say it like that. Does he have locks? One thing is true is that he is separate. And he says, be kadosh, be kadoshim as I am kadosh. Be ye set apart once, he told to Beta Israel, to the Israelites, as he be separate. Right? It's like we have this in the New Covenant, the Brit Chadasha as well. You know, like, you know, um, you know, the example of the Father, being as the Father in spirit and in truth, right? We can't be as, as him in almighty power and almighty knowledge and all of that, 
right? But we can be as him in the sense of being set apart to him, right? To be honored, treated as sacred, set apart. So we have all of this in the root right here of Kadosh. So the point of the Nazarite vow right here is to separate Nazar, separate himself, and therefore the outward sign is the Nazar. The Nazar is the crown, right? The crown, right? And in the Rastafari receptivity, that becomes what we call dreadlocks today, right? And it says, and shall let the locks, right? The locks, notice the word locks, per a. Per-a, the per-a. Per-a is long hair, right? Long hair of locks, locks, the hair. Make the hair grow. Make the hair, Basically, it's saying make the hair grow long, right? Some might make the hair grow long and braid it. Some might make the hair grow long and locks it. There are different traditions of it. But the point of what the Torah is saying is to let the hair grow. This is, as we showed you already from, from Pala, right? The word separate to be wonderful. This is the distinguishing sign. Upon what? Upon the Rosh, upon the head, upon the crown. So that crown upon the crown that signifies the separation. Letting the hair, long hair of head, the locks. Notice the secondary. BDB has a secondary one. It says a leader, right? Being a leader, right? As he is the leader of leaders, right? Therefore, the call chosen the faithful Rastafari in the sense of growing the locks was to step up, as you say, leveling up, right? Separating, right? Making this significant step, step apart. Be separate. We have this from the Old Testament, what's called, right? The Old Testament, Brit Hayashana, to the Brit, um, um, the, the Brit uh, Hag Adosh. You know, the, the new, you know, covenant. Brit Hag Adosh. Uh, Brit, uh, slicka, slicka. Brit um, um, Hadasha, Hadasha. But the Brit, the, 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 the covenant, I said Brit Hag Adosh, the covenant of the holy. Right? That was a Rastafari step, not a Freudian slip, but a Rastafari step right there. <laughs> you know, Barit means covenant, Hakadosh means the holy, to like to say the holy one, a holy covenant. Right? Now notice what it says in Strong's definition. It says the here, but notice what it says in parentheses, open parentheses, as italicized, disheveled, close parentheses, disheveled here. Right? Let the locks grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. Let your natty grow from para. Para. What is para? Right? So we have over here, we have per-a. Per-a. Per-a in the Hebrew. Right? Per-a. Let's get back to locks right there. Per-a. When we go down here, we have para. 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 Also can be pointed as fara, fara, farai, farai, fara, para, to lead and to act as leader, to let go loose, to let loose, to ignore, ignore the barber. You know what I mean? Let alone, let the locks alone, let it go, right? Let it go, right? Let loose, right? Be loose of restraint. Free up yourself, right? To cause, to refrain, to show lack of restraint, lose restraint. Now, of course, there's the positive context. There can be also a negative context if it's not la Yahweh, if it's not to Jehovah, right? Right. So right here, 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 we've seen the long hair connection. Get into what it says, and shall let the locks of the hair, right, the Sa'ar, 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 or Se'ar, Se'ar, right? Se'ar, Se'ar, right? The here, the here is here, here is here is here. Let the here, it could be here of man, here of animals, right here, the second form right here, the sense of disheveling, disheveled here, right? It's used right here, right? Notice it's using Isaiah, Yeshaya, Yeshaya. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 20, KJV, in the same day shall Adonai, right, Adonai, the sovereign, shave with a razor that is hired, namely, by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head 
and the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. So there's this word of prophecy right here, but here it says that Adonai, that the Lord, or more correctly, properly, the sovereign, Adonai is like the sovereign, right? The Adonai Yahweh, right? The sovereign, he who be who he be, the sovereign, Jehovah, the sovereign. But here it says Adonai, right? Shall save. It says, in the same day shall Yahuwah shave with the razor, right? That is higher. Now, let's look at this for a moment. Now, one somebody say, what does this mean? Does it say the Lord shall shave? Right? Let's look at a couple of different versions of this. BBE, in that day will the Lord take away the hair of the head and of the feet, as well as the hair of the face with a blade got for a price from the other side of the river, even with the king of Assyria. Right? So the Yahuwah will use the king of Assyria. Right. Basically, when the Israelites, you know, went into those captivities, they would basically become more of like the Roman Greek, you know, where the clean face, no locks, you know, shave like, you know, you could say female face, smooth, fe feminine face. Right. Notice what it says your, your hair leg, the, even even the leg of the hair. I mean, the, the, the hair of the leg and the beards. Right. In that day, this is just another interesting connection here. Right, so two agent right there. Right, another interesting connection right there. And it says, lastly, shall let the locks. So remember, it's not just the hair, but it's talking about the locks, right? The locks, right, of the hair, of the head grow. So this is the reason, right? This is one of the primary reasons right here is that vow of the Rastafari gotten from the glory of Hila Selassie. He says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. Therefore, any called chosen and faithful Rastafari, we glory in what he glories in. You know, there's a principle. I do what my father tells me to do, what my godfather even tells me to do, right? But I don't do everything he does. Like, I, I do what my father tells me to do, but I'm not going to do what he does. If I do what he does, you know, I would dishonor him. And perhaps also I would dishonor myself. You know, if I do what he does, I would commit some sort of incest. Do you understand the point I'm making? See, some would say, well, we need to do what he does. But the point is, the higher point is, we do what he says to do. We do what John says to do. Right. You know, we do what he says to do. That's the obedience. We do what he says to do. Right. All the days that he separated himself. Once again, the Nazar is there. Right. To notice it says the separation is not to this group of people is not to that group of people. And this is where I think things have gotten kind of confused. Right. In these latter days and times. Right. Is that ones they look over at the next man growing some locks or the next woman or something like that. And they have not made that vow. Like we might point to this. Many point to this right here, but have lost sight. Right. At least the principle, not according to the letter. Right. So the Rastafari didn't do this according to the so-called the literal letter of the law. Right. But according to the spirit of the law is to separate himself to Yahweh. He shall come at no dead body. So therefore, also the adversion of the dead. You know, Rastafari live and life, even life forevermore. That is the, that is the promise, we could say, the yea and the amen of the glory of his divine majesty, of the Bible, of the word, right? And we said the word was speaking of Yeshua. HaMoshiach, the King of Kings Christ, that word made flesh according to the teaching. As we say, give us the teaching of his majesty. So this is the primary place. Now we had to kind of go here for a moment just to establish, right, to the question of why didn't Hala Selassie have, have dreadlocks, right? You mean like the vow of the Nazarite? Well, why didn't, why didn't the Lord, did the Lord have dreadlocks? Did Jehovah have dreadlocks? Did Yahuwah have dreadlocks? I mean, I mean, come on. See, we're doing it to he who be who he be. And his majesty is that man who's assigned in the seal for Rastafari. We see him as the God, as the God man, right? In other words, in a sense, he stands place for God, right? He is that, that man, 
right? As it says, with Ethiopia, this man shall be born there. Weep not, behold, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. So we have it right there, right? For the Rastafari. Right? I'm saying for the Rastafari. Others, right, even other Israelites may not particularly agree, right, with this or that, or they might. Right? But this is the principle right here. So abstain for the Nazarite, it was to abstain from wine and strong drink, including any products of the vine in any form, would not would not, would not let a razor touch his head, but would let his hair grow naturally as a crown. You see this right here? As a crown to God. Right? So the Rastafari as a crown to that God man, to that God king of kings conquering line of the tribe of Judah, would not allow himself to draw near to a dead person, even a member of his own family. So that aversion, right, to the dead, right, to like the idea of death, right? Because see, in the new covenant, the whole idea is overcoming death. So when we, when the Nazarene now comes on the scene, right, he is now fulfilling Right, that shadow, that shadow and that type of what we have in the old covenant. And that's one of the reasons. I know some are going to be saying, but there's other reasons too, right? There's other reasons b besides that. And here, before we just do due diligence right here, I right, have a few exhibits right here. Let's go through some of the other quick points of reference. Now, we can look at many different cultures. Many cultures around the world have grow their hair, you know, locks. You know, for different reasons. You know, the sad Jews. We say, oh, Rastafari come from the sad Jews. Well, they're not the only people that grew locks. All right? Check. All right? Different ones grew, grew locks. All right? For different reasons. According to the Bible, the Torah, the scripture, according to the glory of his match, the B-I-B-L-E, this is the pivotal and the essential fundamental point of reference with Rastafari with the movement of John people known as Rastafari, right? But it's not just limited to, say, the Bible, because we see that locks are grown in different areas. And we know that based on black people's experience in the Americas with trying to make us other than what we were, you know, trying to make us more like so-called Negropeans or Europeans or something else like that, you know, and our making ourselves and living in the image of the beast, you know, that we lost a lot of those things that was ours. So we can see even locks, just the basic principle in Africa. For example, the Mau Mau. I want to point to the Mau Mau here. Right? Let's let's look at the Mau Mau here, the Mau Mau of Kenya, all back in what 1950s, 52 or so in Kenya. So there's also the revolutionary aspects, right? The revolutionary aspects. Now, the revolutionary aspects are already there within Torah. Some people looking at the scripture as only like a religious kind of a thing, they might miss that. That there is a revolutionary aspect here. The whole Torah is very revolutionary. Right? Yes, it's very, it can be very peaceful and loving for call the Yasharala, but it can be very adversarial to others because it's defending for John's people, for we people, our own thing. And this covenant that Yasharala, that Yisrael has taken with Jehovah from, we could say, the Old Testament time, right, becomes a sign even for the Rastafari and the earliest first proclaimers of Rastafari were not Bible phobic. They were not Bible phobic fo folk to say, you know, they didn't have phobias about the Bible. Seemed like a lot of ones have a lot of phobias. Why? Because they're eating off a lot of different plates. There's a lot of different information and disinformation going all around. Some true things along with some false things, a lot of confusion, right? So we see locks within our culture, within our history. You see the Star David right there, what they call the Star David right there. It's an ancient Ethiopia before the European Jews. Here we have this brother right here with locks and also with the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, right? That's setting apart to him. And who is him, right? The conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, right? The king of kings of Ethiopia, this man that was born there, Psalm 87, verse 4. You know, a lot of ones try to wrestle around that. It's not talking about Hala Selassie. I'm talking about Ethiopia. So who is it talking about? Who is this man and, and this building up of Israel? If you notice since the birth of that man-child, talking about Lich Tafari, 
right? The king at birth back in the 18, you know, 92. This is the approximate generation where more Israelite consciousness also was coming strongly and powerfully in the world among the diaspora. So when we go back to some of the first proclaimers, the Crowdies, the, the um, Wentworth Arthur Matthew, um, the Mordecai, um, Brother Mordecai, and, and so many others, this was all in that time. Remember the Bible says, in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and the only potentate the only sovereign, the king of kings, the lord of lords, yes I, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Here we have Ethiopia example of locks. So even in Ethiopia, in the Bahitawi, 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 and Bahit means like to be alone, to be separate, to be alone. Right? When we go back to the Gutas, Bahit, Bahit is a Gutas expression, to be alone, like solitary. Right? Like the man of the mountain that goes up to commune, he's set apart to Yahuwah, right, to Exiavi, the sustainer, and then he comes down to the people like the prophets would, you know, with a revelation, a word, an encouragement, a warning, whatever that word was, right? So we have the locks here. I just want to show ones right here. The locks here within the Ethiopia and the highland, right, tradition of Ethiopia, right? Let's go down here where it says, like a prophet of old, right, and many of the prophets of old also were set apart were Nazarites in that sense. They took that Nazar serious. A monk exhorts the faithful at La Labella, Ethiopia's New Jerusalem, right? Pages 870 to 873. The wayfaring preacher lives on alms. Alms, that means a charity that all people give, like the priest did. The priests, the Levites and the priests, they lived on what the rank and file Israelites brought forward. You know, their tithes, their free will offerings. Malachi, the book of Malachi, prophet Malachi talks all about that, talking about how the people had robbed the ministers of the Lord because they didn't give their tithes and their offerings. You know, see, by giving their tithes and the offerings to the ministers, this was giving it to Yahweh, to Jehovah, because those priests and those Levites were set apart like Yahweh. So therefore, the Nazarite is also set apart like Yahweh. Right now we see his majesty, right? As he who be who he be. I, let, let me testify right here. I see the spirit of Yahuwah, of Jehovah in that man. That man is a sign and a seal. So if the Almighty decided to say, yes, I will walk among men, we see that revelation there and in connection with the words of Yeshua and the second advent. We could get into more detail right there. Other men might say some other things and everything, but we check with the first proclaimers of Rastafari. They said that we, the black people, are Israelites. We're here in captivity because we broke the covenant. Right, so in that context, you can see how the the groundation of Rastafari from the beginning. I'm not talking about all this stuff that's going on today, because a lot of social media Rastas and everything else. I'm talking about Rastafari, New Jerusalem School of Hard Knocks. The wayfaring preacher, he lives on alms, right, as he spreads the gospel. What the gospel? Same thing the King of Kings speaks of the good news among all who will listen. Right among all who will listen, right. Um, many are called, few choose to give ear to hear, right. So right here, here, here. Um, <laughs> this is interesting. Here you might have seen this. Haile Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia during the 20th century, was regarded as the Messiah of all black people? Question mark. The only other black person to have an entire religion they say, built around them was Jesus or Yeshua, right? Then down here, it says right here, I and I know Jesus was black because the court found him guilty with no evidence. <laughs> and this is the same thing with the world concerning Haile Selassie the first, right? That they too found him guilty, right? With no evidence. Does man cause famine? If a man can cause famine, that would be the power of a God. Think about it for a moment. If a man could cause famine, then that is the power of not a God, but of the God, right? The man who is the sign and the seal, right? This man, 
right? So right here, 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 that's the reason, right? That his majesty did not have to have locks because we are those who separate ourselves to him. And we see Yahuwah in him and him in Yahuwah, right? You know, I said the father in the son, the son in the father, right? Now, yeah, that's a quote that get people right there. Yes, I am Christian, but as king, I am Christian. I am one of have faith in the Moshiach, Yeshua. But as Negus, as Melech, I am equally Christian, Muslim, and pagan. And that word pagan get people right there. But pagan means those people in the countryside, right? The people in the countryside, the people who are outside the Judeo-Christian. You could say um, liberty, but being king, right? Like in other words, earth is the Lord's. That means all the peoples and all their religions, but only to the children of Israel did he choose to make this particular covenant with. All right, check, check. Let's just show you this right here before we get out of this one right here. All right, so that set apart, that being set apart to his majesty, being the minister of his good news, of his teaching, and the fullness of his teaching. Right? Many of mine, mine, they like to speak on the political things, but then on the faith-based things, you know, it become a little shaky among the latter-day generation. Because remember Daniel's prophecy. Daniel's prophecy has a lot to do with it. The saints get the kingdom, but then there's this war against the saints. You remember all the 80s, right? The 80s and the 90s and what occurred then. Coming now to 2000, it's almost like we're trying to now come out of this persecution that Daniel's prophecy said because we're coming into the times of the end. Now, this particular picture of Abu Kedus, I still think this is like a doppelganger, as they say, or some say, um, they may say dead ringer, but it's a, it's a very powerful likeness, right? And from my own investigation, as well as certain Ethiopians, you know, native Ethiopians, have lent certain testimonies concerning the same one, Abba Kedus, and we do see this Abba Kedus as a manifestation of Haile Selassie I. Just to point that out right there from what our investigation has brought about. Now, there's different Bahitawi monks, so forth and so on, but we're speaking about this one right here, and even here we have the locks right here. You know what I mean? The locks. And what is known is that many kings of Ethiopia Right. And also other nobility and just regular people after they live their regular life, you know, have family and children and do those things. Some of them will seek to retire from those things as they get older, you know, and go within one, we'll say the church or the monasteries or the mountains to spend more time with God, you know, to set apart after they have done their duty, so to speak in their older years. And this is known tried and tradition of many anointed kings, king of kings of Ethiopia upon the throne of David. Remember, David would never lack a man to sit upon his throne. So that means when Israel, the 10 tribes went into captivity, and then when Judah, and then later on with the temple destroyed, there was still a throne of David in the world. It was hidden from the Western white Gentile world until Ethiopia, the hidden empire, became more revealed. But a king was still on the throne of David because David will never lack a man, right? So in Haile Selassie I, we have the last man that we know of to occupy that throne in these latter days and time. So that's another sign right there of prophecy. And if this really is his imperial majesty as Abba Kedus, you know what I'm saying? Then it also proves that that tribe tradition from earlier is a tribe tradition that his majesty no doubt took upon him. Now I know there's the bone lies and, and all the stuff about the death and all these things like that, but a lot of things have been news about a lot of things, you know, but from our investigation, there's not much substance. You know, some Ethiopians want closure through the bone lies, but we know that the bone lies, right? Why do you seek for the living among the dead? So on the point of locks to seal this up right here, 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 I think this is also another pick right here. Right, we have um, the Mau Mau, right? Field Marshal General Musa, um, Muariyama, Muariyama, leader of the Kenyan guerrillas of the land and freedom movement that was called the Mau Mau in Meru. Meru, also there's a mountain, important mountain, Mount Meru. Meru, Kenya, 
right? He was the highest ranking Mau Mau who survived the anti-colonial war against the British in the forests and jungles of central Kenya from its inception to independence without being killed or captured. So it's, it's General Field Marshal General Musa Moariyama and ones like him who also became inspiration for the early locksmen of the Rastafari order, right? It's ones like him. So this is where we have some of our brothers focusing on the revolutionary aspect. But both the res revolutionary aspect as well as the faith-based aspects, you know what I mean, are very important. You know what I mean? Both of those is part of the covenant because faith without works is dead. So even the Israelites in the Old Testament, when they was told to have faith in Yahuwah and also to fight in the wars of Yahuwah against the enemies of Yahuwah, right? That was a part of their fulfilling their covenant. That was a part of their fulfilling their faith. One could call it, quote, strong quotes, religious duty, so to speak, doing one's duty. Here's a young picture right here. Um, Revelation chapter 12, that man child of Revelation right here. You can even see the locks right here. If you want to see the locks, you can see the locks right here. Right? There's the locks right here. This man child, right? The locks right there. Now, some might look at that as being the locks, but there's the locks right there from, from the birth, right? From being a young child and a child shall do what? and a child shall lead them, right? And the stages, right, of that child, right, as a seed, right, to the king, right, to the ancient of days, right, as the prophecy so says, right? So here, 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 brothers and sisters, I always thought this was his majesty for Yamaka in the old bad black and white pictures. It's always like a yarmulke, you know, the old picture. Some of y'all might not know from this generation, but some of us didn't have all these uh, high resolution, high definition pictures today. We had photocopy of photocopy. So it seemed as though, you know, the light area on the crown of the head was like a mulka, right? But it makes you think, even though it's not that, it still makes you think, doesn't it? So yeah, so the locks, did Yeshua have locks? Right? Well, it is believed that he did. Right? It's believed. It's known that he was from Nazareth. Or, what, or Let's say it correctly. He was born in Bethlehem of Judah, but he grew up in a place called Nazareth. The word Nazareth looks like it belongs to or is connected with Nazarite, but that's only because the translator, you know, the translators didn't translate it right. Right? But here's the more key question, whether Yeshua had locks or not. Based on what the vow of the Nazarite says, right? was he separated? Was he separate? Was he holy right? to Yahuwah? And we would say, yea and amen. Right? So there is that particular connection. Right? Yeshua and the locks, it's quite likely that he did because we have the whole connection with the Nazarenes and even Paul having a vow and other men having a vow on them and they had to shave their heads. And this basically seems much like what we have in Ha Torah, right? Seeing that Paul and others did observe the Torah in Moshia, right? It's not like the Latter-day Christians today, you know? Um, that are lawless, as he says, he says, he will say, they'll say, haven't we done all these wonderful things in your name? And he will say, you know, you know, you know, get away from me, you lawless ones, you know? Anyway, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, yes, I, Rastafari. So as Yeshua was set apart to his father, right? The call chosen the faithful Rastafari set apart to their father, right? To that father. Right, of righteous Africa. So there we go, right there, brothers and sisters. His majesty did not have to have locks. Right? That's the that's that's the point of it. He didn't have to have locks. And it's because of misreading and misunderstanding of what the first proclaimers of Rastafari and the locksmen were actually saying. Their reasons for growing their locks were being set apart to Yah to Jah, right? Who they identified with his imperial magic, Ramawi Hala Selassie, that God man, king of kings of Ethiopia. So this is just art right here. I'm showing you this particular pic. People say, oh, that's, that's fake. Well, it's art. 
fine. You know what I mean? It's art. You ever create something artistically? You know, maybe, maybe not. So maybe you don't understand of the art of the matter, right? Yes, I, Rastafari. So right here, 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 did His Majesty have locks? He had locks of here, but he did not have dreadlocks, right? You know? Yes. The father comes to testify of the son as the son testified of the father. And we, being that people, created to give him praise. Hallelujah, Rastafari.